So far in section 6.2, we've defined what a probability experiment is so that we can know when the rules for probability experiments apply. And then once we know that they do apply, we can use the formulas to find those probabilities. And those formulas are embedded in our calculators, which turned out wonderful, although a little bit tricky to figure out exactly how to use it in every situation. We have just a couple more highlights to hit now. First thing we need to do is talk about the mean and the standard deviation of a binomial random variable. So the mean and the standard deviation are important concepts that we learned about in chapter 3. And since we're sort of gathering that the binomial random variable is important for later chapters, it'll be important that we know how to find the center and the spread for that binomial distribution. Now the center is the mean, and the formula for it is mu is equal to NP. So if we have the mean is equal to the number of trials, N, times the probability of success, P. Well, that's easy enough. Now the spread is the standard deviation, and that's the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. Right there. Now you might be thinking, how will I ever memorize these formulas? Oh, but you don't have to, because they're right here, right underneath where we found the binomial PDF and CDF table. There's the mean and the standard deviation just given to us in the formula sheet. Great, so we just have to know how to apply them. So let's look back at our healthcare research where 53% of people who had coronary bypass surgery in 2008 were over the age of 65. And then we had 15 random coronary bypass patients sampled. So recall that this is binomial with n is equal to 15, there's n, and probability success equal to 0.53. So we can use those two values to find the mean and the standard deviation and then interpret them. So there we have it. So I wrote it all up. So this is a binomial experiment. n is equal to 15. p is equal to 0.53. We don't really care about q, so I'll just delete that. So then the mean is equal to 15 times 0.53, which is 7.9. But let me prove it to you. 15 times 0.9, or 0.53, excuse me, 0.53. And then the st standard deviation is the square root, so that's the second square root button, 15 times 0.53 times 1 minus 0.53. And you can use multiple sets of parentheses, but just make sure that the whole thing is underneath your square root. And it shows that it's 1.933, which is this number that I got right here. So then the interpretation part. So that's the calculation already. So the interpretation is down here. And the big difference between how we would interpret these before is before we would just say, if we would expect 7.95 patients to ha be over the age of 65, give or take 1.933. But the problem is that's kind of devoid of context. 7.95 out of how many? Out of 100? Out of 1,000? So you have to put in the 15, the fact that you're dealing with a group, a random group at that, of 15 coronary bypass patients. So there has to be three portions now to this interpretation for binomial mean and standard deviation. You have the N, right, what's your sample size, and mention somewhere that it's random and what it is. And then in that sample size of 15, we would expect about 7.95 of the patients to be over the age of 65, of course, there I'm defining what my success is. Over the age of 65 is success, which I could put up here real quick. Comma s equals over 65. There we have it. All right, so if that's the case, over 65, sorry, there we go, is my success. That's how I'm defining it down here give or take 1.933 patients. So it has to have a lot of pieces. You have to have the N, you have to have your sample, you have to have your mean and talk about what success was, and then give or take and make sure that your standard deviation has the same units as your mean. All right, now let's also look at a probability histogram. So this is a binomial probability histogram. And you can see over on the 15 area how it looks like it's zero. There's no graph there. So if you see how these other values have bars, and actually it's true of 14, 
and 15, and actually I'm looking at the graph now, it looks like 0 and 1. So 0, 1, 14, 15 all have no probability shown in a probability histogram. So that might make one think that there's no probability there, but that's not the case, right? So is the probability of 15 patients being over 65 0, even though it looks like 0 on the graph because there's no bar there? And the answer is absolutely not. There. So remember, we've already found this probability back a page ago when we were dealing with the bypass patients problem. So n was 15, p was 0.53. So the probability of 15 is equal to binome PDF 15 comma 0.53 comma 15, which was in scientific notation 7.34 e negative 5. So let me refine that for you just real quick. Well, that value is very, 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 very small. And so what's happening is that a computer can only graph so much, but if it gets really tiny, then the computer's not going to graph anything because it's literally at the microscopic level. And that's what's happening to us. It's literally smaller. The bar height would be less than the line is worth. Right. So there's that horizontal line in the problem on the x-axis, and that horizontal line is literally taller than this value of 0. 0.00007. So the graph just makes it look like it's zero, but it's not actually zero. It's just really, really small. So therefore, it doesn't show it with their given scale. Note that this is also true for 0, 1, and 14. Almost true of 2, but not quite. 2 actually has a little sliver there. But 0, 1, and 14 also don't have 0 probabilities, but the graph makes them look like they do. All right, so let's look at this last problem, which has to do with how we can determine which probability goes with which graph. So knowing what the graphs kind of look like is what we're trying to get a sense of here. So for every single one of these graphs, n is equal to 15. but one of the graphs is 0.2, one of the graphs is 0.5, and one of the graphs is 0.8. Now there are a lot of ways, well actually just a couple ways that you could figure this out. So let's start with 0.2. If the probability of success is 0.2, that means that in general you're not going to succeed very often. So most of the people in this 15 set, n equals 15, are going to not be successful. Right, they're going to be on the low end, which means that this graph right here, letter B, has to be the one. Another way you can see it is the mean formula. The mean is equal to n times P, right? So 15 times 0.2, which would be, let's grab that calculator, 15 times 0 0.2, it's 3. So you can see the vast majority, that's 3 is the tallest bar right there, because that's where most people are going to fall, somewhere within, you know, give or take, one or two away from 3, 3 being the mean. I didn't bother to figure out the standard deviation, but you can see that it's got to be around there. 0.5, on the other hand, would be 7.5, because if you take 15 times 0.5, you'll get a mean of 7.5 which shows that letter C has got to be that one, right? The vast majority of people are hovering right around that middle of 7.5. And it's also the most symmetric of the graphs because 0.5 is a 50-50 shot. So usually students spot that C has to be 0.5 before they figure out which one of A or B has to be 0.2 or 0.8. And that leads us to 0.8. Well, if you have an 80% chance of success, then you're going to be on the high side for success. So you're going to be over here on the right. Another way to see it is that the mean is 0.8 times 15. So 15 times 0.8 would be 12. So that means that, and there, sure enough, 12 is the highest bar. Most of the bars are clustering around 12. So I went back in and I typed in all of that stuff. So this one, letter A, is P equals 0.8 because the mean is equal to 15 times 0.8, which is 12, and I marked it with this arrow on the graph. This one over here is P equals 0.2 because the mean is 3, and I marked that there with that arrow. Right? Another way you can see it is that 0.8 has a high chance of success, so more successes will be on the high side. 0.2 is a low chance of success, so most of the bars will be on the low side. And 0.5 will be evenly distributed. So 50-50, so the mean is 7.5, which is the balance point right here at 7.5.